Hickok 45. I may not have a cowboy hat on, but I are a cowboy. Always. With my Cimarron Thunderer. Let's create a little thunder. <laughs> and a little splash. <laughs> Don't you tell anybody I missed. Oh man, dead center. Had to, well, I started saying it had to be an accident. Maybe not. Let's try it again. <laughs> Click. All right. Not bad. Not bad. Create a little thunder, and uh, that's what I like to do. It's what I do best. Uh, create thunder. <laughs> Make noise, don't I? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we got the Cimarron Thunderer here, and uh, I had never shot one. I don't think we've done anything with the bird's head grip like this. Uh this is a little different from what you see in my collection of Colt single actions, isn't it? Uh, this has got a shorter barrel, need I tell you? It has a bird's head grip, and that's a little different for me. And it, I, I've been meaning to do something like this and just haven't. It's one of the uh, few, well, these fall right out of it. It's one of the few, <laughs> well, that's nice. It's one of the few uh, Colt single actions or single actions that I might have just a little bit of a yen for because I don't own a three inch or three and a half inch Colt or Cimarron or anything. And I have to say, this is a pretty cool little gun. If for someone who loves single actions, why don't I have one? You know, it sort of occurred to me <laughs> to just get out and plink with every now and then. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little different, and uh, we'll talk about it. So, uh, this is what is commonly referred, well, it's called the uh, Cimarron Thunderer uh, for a reason. Uh, Colt used to make a single action back in the, I think, 1877 model. They made it for about 30 years, and in they, it was in uh, 41 Long Colt. It was in 38 uh, Long Colt. I believe the 38 was the Lightning, the 41 was the Thunderer. They even made a Rainmaker, I think, in 32, but it was, I think, prior to that. So if you've heard the, the Colt Thunderer, it was a firearm like this with this grip, but it was a double action. And uh, as I understand, I've never been very attracted to them. I don't really see that many of them in, as antiques or uh, you know, Western gun shows and things, they're around. Uh, as I understand, they were a little fragile and prone to breakage uh, and were not as popular as you would think they were. Although there are quite a few folks that I think Billy the Kid carried one of those, didn't he? Uh, so when they worked, I'm sure they worked. And this grip, uh, like on the Thunderer or Lightning, that might have been one of the major appeals because that grip is pretty nice. It's smaller. And in terms of working a, a, a double action trigger, I think it was considered better. You know, the way it's more like a, uh, not a Smith & Wesson grip, but you know, it just was better maybe for, for double action fire. Uh, with that big old plow grip for some people, they probably have a hard time, you know, with the trigger that actually cocks the hammer, and long trigger pull and all that sort of thing. But uh, they, uh, I think there were some, Colt made some Derringers back in the 1850s that had a bird's head grip, and then they pulled that idea back out for the, the Lightning and the Thunder and the, you know, the Model 1877 uh, uh, firearms. But they never really put it on the Peacemaker, you know, the Colt Single Action Army. So this is a little bit of a, uh, you know, <laughs> it's a creation by Cimarron and Uberti. Okay, they thought it would be cool to have a Colt single action with a bird's head grip on it and have a short barrel. Okay, because that was uh, that had some popularity as well. Uh, back in the 19th century, they made some of those. I think they made them by just uh, grinding off this part of the frame and, and leaving off the ejector, you know, in housing. And uh, then in the 1900s, they uh, revisited that and they made some of the sheriff's models, storekeeper models. You may have seen some around. And they just went ahead and made the frame more symmetrical without any of that bulge you know, for that to begin with. And those are a little more attractive. Uh, that might be something I wouldn't mind having sometime. But yeah, without the ejector rod housing. Okay. So this one does have the ejector rod housing and it's a three and a half inch barrel. 
okay? If I didn't say, I think it sells for around 500, 550 or whatever, typically. Uh, the problem with a barrel this short on a, essentially a cold single action is this. And here I have a cold single action out here. Four and three quarter inch barrel, okay? Well, you see you have a shorter, let's put the barrels together here. You have a much shorter barrel. This is four and three quarters on this Colt, and this is three and a half. And uh, guess what? That means your ejector rod housing is going to be shorter. Okay? You can tell by looking at it. Because it would be a little bit weird if it extended beyond the barrel. So I've got a news flash for you. If you have a uh, three and a half inch ejector a barrel, you cannot have an ejector rod housing and everything longer than that. So that's what you get. You've probably seen some of these, maybe uh, you know, in auctions or whatever, without any ejector rod at all. Okay, and you want well, how do you get the case out? Well, you just punch it out with a stick or, or something. Okay, you, you can get them out. Now, you're not going to reload in a hurry, right? Uh, you're not going to win any uh, USPSA matches because you've got to get those empties out, you know, punch them out. Of course, this won't be in the way. So you can take a stick, you know, and just, just punch them out. And maybe they'll fall out, you know, if you got your chambers polished and good brass and all that, clean brass. But uh, you just punch them out and then reload. Uh, so that's that's what that is. Now, the, the reason they, they were called, a, I guess, a storekeeper model or the sheriff's model is for someone to carry that's not in a lot of shootouts on a daily basis right as if anybody is but you know a reload is not that important it's important to have a firearm all right and you need to plan to solve the problem with five shots or six shots okay and you know if you get killed for lack of shooting back more than the five shots or the six shots it just wasn't a good day for you the bad day for you right so you got uh, five or six shots of 45 colt that ain't bad no quick reload, but now you don't exactly have a speed reload option even with this. You can just half cock it and, you know, get the cases out maybe a little quicker, okay? You know, jack them out of there like that, all right? Now, again, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the ones without the ejector rod housing. Now, on this one, you do have the ejector rod, but it's still not a perfect world. Let me put on half cock. I got that, that, uh, okay. I've been messing around with the yeah with this screw. I want to talk about that. Okay, so you've got the half cock. This is the old action. It's not like a Ruger. It doesn't have that uh, safety block and all that. You're you're talking old action. That's why I load five. Uh, so it's just like that one in terms of the action. So you notice uh, when I push the ejector rod, how far it goes. Okay, let's see what it is on this one. Uh, how far it goes in there? Yeah, it's a little further, doesn't it? That doesn't seem like a lot. But it actually is when you're talking about pushing out those cases. See, uh, but I found with one like this or any of them, you want to line them up and punch it pretty hard. Even if they're not that stuck, you want to really kind of punch them out. Okay, and then that way they're more likely to fall clear. Okay, because they just don't make it all the way. Then the next time you try to hit it again and you can't, it's too far back, and you got to peel them out with your fingernails. Okay, not a problem. Okay, so. You do have the ejector rod housing, it's just it's very short and it's not quite as effective. So, yeah, if I were going to buy one, I would, uh, a, a Colt or something, a, you know, kind of a more collectible gun, I'd probably look for one without that and I'd just suffer through it it's, because it's kind of a unique gun. But this is unique and it's pretty neat. Yeah, I, I really like it more than I thought I would. I like the feel of the grips and it is cool that it has the ejector rod housing because it, it kind of works even though it's very short boy if you got any shorter than that it would not but it, it kind of works a little bit and i do owe cimarron an apology to somebody i saw a comment on i don't know if it's the white herb cimarron or which one it was because i had talked about not liking so much this screw the base pen screw you know it's the black powder frame style you know you got your base pen screw instead of the crossbar uh, and I thought that was kind of funky, you know, and all that. Well, so I saw a comment somebody left just, just a couple of days ago. So if you look in your box, you'll find in a piece of plastic like this, another screw. And lo and behold, I thought, oh, well, let me go check this Cimarron because we still had it and hadn't done the video yet. <laughs> Maybe it has one too. 
sure enough, here it is. So if you put it in there, it does go all the way in pretty well flush. Now I notice it's not perfectly flush unless you have the ejector rod or base pin all the way back as, as, as it is when you want a safety, okay? And then it goes in totally flush and you do need the screwdriver on this one to get it all the way, you know, just like on that one. So it's more like the real base pin, okay? See that? So it does have a, a screw that doesn't extend, and I didn't know it. I'm sorry, Mike Harvey and Cimarron, I didn't know that. Uh, but now when it's not out uh, back in that far, I notice it, it does protrude just a hair. It's not perfect, okay? That's okay, that B-side other one. Uh, because as I think I probably said in the other video, uh, why, you know, what are you gonna do? A lot of speed reloading or speed uh, replacing the cylinder? You know, you're just not, you know, when you, you, you take that out, it's when you're taking the base pin out and you're cleaning the gun, you know, so that's generally not a, a, a deal. It has to be quick is my point, all right? But anyway, you got both options. All right, and this has a safety where if you push the base pin all the way in, it blocks the hammer. It's a hammer block. And then if it's in that notch where you see it right now, it does not block the hammer, okay? So let's shoot it again, okay? So I wanted to make sure I kind of covered that, uh, about that barrel length. As cool as it looks, you do give up that uh, longer ejector rod, okay? Uh, and that might really bother you. If it does, you know, it's a problem. <laughs> Say old action, you know, half cock, load the first one, skip one and put the other four in. And then when you pull the hammer back, it'll come down on an empty chamber. All right. And I guess we haven't talked about that for a while, depending on when you see videos. But uh, with these single actions, you pull the hammer all the way back or you don't pull it back at all. Okay. And then you go all the way down. All right, or you could go to half cock, of course, to load it and unload it. But then before you put it back down, is what I really should say, you want to bring it all the way back and then all the way down. All right. So let's try these jacketed rounds on that cowboy of all things. How about that? Woo! Wounded him. Missed him. Boom. That's hit pretty hard. So, 45 Colt, a heavy hitter, no doubt about it. Okay, so I've given you the price. I think I didn't have that screw in that uh, base pin there. Make sure I got that all the way. That's the one thing about it. I think maybe they have to do this to import these. Yeah, there. You get that in the right notch so it doesn't move you know, either direction, that base pin. It holds the cylinder you know, square. Uh, yeah, so you look back there, you can see it, it's flush with that edge. That's where you want it when you're going to fire it, okay? And then if you don't want to fire it, it's going to protrude a little bit, it's going to be a safety. Okay, so there we go. Let's empty it. Okay, so here we go. We, uh, we've got a punch. Okay. Yeah, if you punch pretty quick, it'll knock them out of there and it work, you know, about as well as that one. Even though you don't have much length to the ejector rod, okay? So, uh, what else about it? Uh, pretty neat, the bird's head grips. I think you'll, even if you think you wouldn't like them, I think uh, you would. They feel really good to me, even in my hand. They've got a lot of meat to them. Uh, you know, you got pretty good color case hardening. Uh, nice finish. Uh, you know, it's just not a bad looking gun, and it shoots pretty well, I have to say. And it feels good. I'm having a little trouble keeping that tight. Let me, I, I guess even though it's, you got the knurl on it, you can do it by hand. Maybe it's better to tighten it up with a screwdriver and make sure it's good and tight. And, uh, you know, it's a Colt clone. Uh, again, though, it's not anything that Colt made, right? Uh, they did not put these bird's head grips on a Colt single action like this, right? That's not to say we can't do it. Yeah, they should have done it. Let's put it that way, okay? Early on, you could, you could order a Colt at any barrel length I think you wanted. Whether or not you got an ejector rod and it worked out you know, perfectly is another matter. But they were good, just like Winchester, about uh, special orders. And if you want a barrel, three inches or two inches or whatever. So there's some of those out there, I guess, in various lengths. And, and again, uh, the, uh, the storekeeper, the sheriff's model, terminology, nomenclatures, I understand came about in the 20th century. That was something that 
was made up later on. Just like Peacemaker was not a cult term, it was like one of the distributors. Uh, in Cincinnati, I can't think of this, where this one was shipped to, uh, I'm drawing a blank on that name, but it, uh, as I understand, they came up with the term uh, Peacemaker, in fact, and part of the marketing. And, uh, you know, so same with Storekeeper and, and Sheriff's Model, and you sort of understand why. Uh, just a handy little little length. There I go again now. We have to loosen that up. If you don't get it just right, there we go. It ends up creating a safety that you don't want. Okay. There we go. And the hammer doesn't know what to do in the action. There we go. But it's got a nice action. Feels pretty good. So I would recommend you get it right there where it needs to be and then tighten it up and you're good to good to go okay so I'm having trouble keeping it yeah you can see what I'm doing uh, it's getting a little darker here losing light but see the edge of it protruding just a little bit and you really want it out there we go right in there and then tighten it up okay so pretty cool little gun can I shoot it again all right what I might do, I think I'm going to take that out and put the other one in. Make it more realistic and we'll shoot it one more time. I didn't want to shoot it a lot. I wanted to let you know what this is about. You see these, you know, in catalogs or wherever online. And, uh, and it'd be easy for you to think, wow, there's one of those old Colt storekeeper models, you know, authentic looking, just like Colt made. Well, again, it's cool and I like it. But they didn't, they didn't make this model, okay? Just know that. But that's not a big deal. Uh, you know, you could, you know, you realize, the old, you know, the old Army, you know, yeah, the old Army uh, percussion pistol that was adopted by, by the North uh, during the Civil War, 1860 Army, I'm trying to say, uh, that I'm pretty sure in this, you can take the grip off of that and the frame and everything, and you can put it on this gun, even the replicas. So, you know, people have done that just to get a bigger grip. It's got a little bit longer grip on it. A Bisley grip you could put on there. Uh, you can take the grip and I think the, the frame, back strap and everything off of a 1851 Navy, an original one or a reproduction and put it on this gun. If you just, it's basically the same grip. So, you know, changing the grips is uh, just, just one thing, something a lot of people do. So. There's nothing terribly non-historical about having a bird's head grip on the on this gun, so let's load it up and shoot it again, okay? All right, so uh, negatives uh, in terms of this gun, it's a cool little gun. Like I say, the, one of the negatives is just, uh, you know, shorter ejector rod. And, of course, shorter barrels are more difficult to shoot well, okay? That's just part of it. And, uh, you know, in any almost any firearm, whether it's a modern firearm or an antique firearm, the shorter the barrel, the shorter the sight radius, and the easier it is to, to you know, be off target a little bit. So always be aware of that. But it also has advantages, doesn't it? It's a handy little piece. <laughs> Got a bug, <laughs> knocked it down. I think I have one more round, maybe. I'll just try a, an arm on that uh, tree. Whoa, knocked it around, didn't it? <laughs> 45 Colt does the job. I think I fired them all. Let me double check. Yeah, yeah, I fired them all. So uh, the the Cimarron Thunderer. So you sort of understand. Hopefully I, I didn't misspeak or tell you a lie. But uh, the Thunderer comes from, again, the 1877, you know, uh, double action. And the 41 Colt was considered a the Thunderer, you know, it was a name. And it had the bird's head grip. Okay, so that's where that comes from. So they took the grip from their double action, and uh, Cimarron did, and put it on pretty much a Colt single action army, you know, the single action, okay, and put a short barrel on and uh, chambered it in 45 Colt. And here it is. Pretty cool. It's something you might uh, find fascinating, you know, fun, fun to shoot. It could even become your new carry gun, couldn't it? Because it's about as small as you can get, uh, well, almost, you know, in, in a cold single action uh, with a good grip and, you know, something that's pretty shootable.
So anyway, thought we'd let you uh, take a look at this. And uh, I, I personally, I just wanted to shoot it. I haven't inspired one. And so uh, I, wanted, I wanted to shoot it. And so I hope you wanted to see it. Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it? Uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastall. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastall for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to Ballastall.com, TalonGunGrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.